We were informed that we were going to have a college student moving in with us. Hi, Dorothy. How are you? Fine. I didn't know that you knew my dad. It's been really And great. then yeah. when I found out she was living There's two doors down it. from me, I thought, well, that'll be fun. I will get to meet her. And then I was asked to be one of her two mentors. And I was just honored. They've been so kind. When I first moved in here, I got like 10 letters under my door who said, welcome to Westminster Thurber. We're so excited to have you here. We're excited to be your neighbor. The Age-Friendly Student in Residence Program is an initiative of the OSU College of Social Work through the Age-Friendly Columbus and Franklin County uh, effort in partnership with Ohio Living and uh, Westminster Thurber. The first thing that I thought of was how can we get young people to love older adults? How can we get them to love this industry, which is so incredible? <laughs> and through Holly and Age Friendly and uh, my team, we came up with the idea of having a student in residence program. We get to have meals with her and talk more casually and ask her about things that she can help us with. <laughs> you have to navigate a different way of communicating with them sometimes. S someone who's 90 and when you're 20, you know, there's 70 years difference there. And so sometimes you, you know, you have to kind of navigate like ways to relate to them. And you really learn to serve the other person. So I didn't realize that there was so many, that residents were so engaged in this place and that residents will go to five or six activities a day or, um, or you know, they'll do something in the morning and then take a little break and then do something in the afternoon or they'll run errands or... So I didn't expect it to be so busy. Then are you there to study me or are you really my neighbor or are you going to judge what I do? Having those kinds of supports in place so that a student wasn't coming in to impose who they are into this community, but instead to engage in the community, hear what people are interested in, and thinking about how to develop relationship as a neighbor. One thing that Natalie has done is her back porch stories. She just gets a group of people together, up to 10, some of the groups would be smaller, I'm sure, and she just throws out questions. And as we got to know her, and she got to know us in ways that we just never would have otherwise, and we residents got to know each other in different ways. I attend a group called Current Events, and I said, I don't usually read the newspaper, and he said, well, I'm gonna change that, and he gives me the New York Times every day after he reads it. They're the friendliest neighbors, you know, I've actually talked to some of them about career advice, about their past experiences and how I can use that. I heard her mention in conversation that she's learned a lot of patience since she's lived here. And we all have to learn that patience when we live here because we are in a communal setting. Even among residents, we're of different generations. Some of us can move more quickly and process more quickly and others just by virtue of age are a little slower. Patients in any situation we find ourselves in is critical to achieving real relationship. The residents have also just taught me to um, take things slowly and be in the present. I uh, tend to be a person that's very intense and loves to be busy, um, but they've taught me how to relax, really, and just to be like, it's okay to take a break. Like, it's okay to do some things and then take a break and take time for yourself, which I think is a really important skill, especially with social work, you know, setting boundaries. It's really important to do that. I think the College of Social Work's principal role is to provoke creativity, to get people talking to each other that maybe haven't done that before, and to just think about what's possible. 
We've always seen aging is not a problem to be solved. Aging is a tremendous opportunity. There are a lot of assets in our aging and in our older adults. And we also take the view that our traditional approach to how we're thinking about aging really isn't going to work in the long term. Too many of us are, are, are hitting that, uh, that gray-haired moment, uh, particularly in Ohio. But again, it's, it's really not a problem to be solved. It's like, what could be possible with, with older adults as partners? She Hi, is Emily, she's going to be the next student in residence here. Yeah. I'm excited to share that our next student is um, involved in city planning. And what can that student bring to this campus as we design spaces for older adults? I think I'm hoping to learn what um, older adults really want. So being in the planning program I, and at work, uh, I do a lot of planning around aging and that's sort of a new forefront um, in the planning field. And so being able to be here and talk with residents and just truly know how their everyday lives are in this city will be really helpful. I think there's this stigma that to work in such places um, it's not rewarding and that the people that you're interacting with um, are a burden. I think a lot of people view older adults as a burden um, when in reality they're the most amazing people I've ever met. We like to feel that we still matter in the world and I just hope other campuses do it because it brought so it has brought so much joy. So I think we all have things to learn from each other and that's that's the benefit of mixing the generations. So instead of it being a one-way street, it's a two-way street and that is a much better basis for um, connection and for true relationship.